Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience in perceiving or as it encodes? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva listens to Buddhas, speak the Dharma, contemplates the nature of all Dharmas, perfects his study and cultivation, and arrives at the opposite shore. He knows that all sounds are like echoes in that they neither come nor go, but merely seem to exist. Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva contemplates how the first common sound comes neither from within, nor from without, nor from in between, within and without. Although he comprehends that their sound comes neither from within, nor from without, nor from in between, he realizes that the words and phrases spoken are the manifestation of skillful and clever experience. Commentary The universal worthy Bodhisattva further asks disciples of the Buddha what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's practice of patience in perceiving all as equals. Disciples of the Buddha this Bodhisattva Mahasattva constantly listens to all Buddhas speak the Dharma. He contemplates the nature of all Dharmas with his wisdom. He studies and practices in accordance with the Dharma, perfects his study and cultivation, and arrives at the opposite shore of Nirvana. He knows that all sounds are like echoes in that they neither come nor go, but merely seem to exist. Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva contemplates how the first common sound comes neither from within, nor from without, nor from in between, within and without. This great Bodhisattva observes how the sound emitted by the Buddhas neither comes from inside, nor outside, nor in between inside and outside. Although he comprehends that their sound comes neither from within nor from without nor from in between, he still realizes that the words and phrases spoken by the Buddhas are the manifestation of skillful and clever experience. Sutra, like echoes in a valley, this sound arises from conditions yet remains unopposed to the drama nature. It causes all sentient beings to gain the kind of understanding appropriate to their individual differences, thereby enabling them to cultivate and study. Consider Lord Sakra's wife, the Asura king's daughter, Satsi Hokan, without conscious intention, produced a thousand kinds of sound in a single sound. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same way. He enters the realm of non-discrimination, masters a versatile sound that adapts to beings of different capacities, and eternally turns the Dharma will in boundless worlds. Commentary Like echoes in a valley, if you yell at one side of the valley, an echo will come from the other side. When you loudly recite Namo Kwan Shin Bodhisattva here, within seconds you can hear Namo Kwan Shin Bodhisattva echoing back from the opposite side. This sound arises from causes and conditions, yet it remains unopposed to the essential Dharma nature. It causes all sentient beings to gain a kind of understanding appropriate to their individual differences, thereby enabling them to cultivate and study, no matter what type of beings uh, hear this kind of sound made by a Buddha, they can all understand clearly and cultivate in accordance with the drama. Consider Lord Sakura's wife. She is the Asura king's daughter named Sakshi, who can, without conscious intention, produce a thousand kinds of sound in a single sound. She is able to produce this type of sound without consciously consciously trying to do so. The mind of sounds are a natural transformation of her voice. If she had to use conscious intention, she would be engaging in false thinking. Thus, the saying, without thought, one receives an efficacious response. Without thought, one engages in false thinking.
the various sounds of South Sea are very pleasing to the ears, delighting all who hears. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same way. He enters the realm of non-discrimination, masters a versatile sound that adapts to beings of different capacities. In order to teach and transform them, no matter where the Bodhisattva goes, he speaks the drama in the language native to that location. He also speaks the language of every living being. For example, when he sees a horse, he speaks a drama in the language of the horse. When he meets a cow, he explains the drama in the cow's language. In this way, the Bodhisattva eternally turns the drama wheel in boundless worlds without a moment of rest. Sutra, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva can expertly observe all sentient beings and expound the drama to them by means of the whole mark of a vast long tongue. His voice pervades the lands of the ten directions without a hindrance, enabling all therein to hear the drama as suited to their individual differences. Though the Bodhisattva knows that sound arises from nowhere, he manifests sounds everywhere. Though he knows there is nothing to say, he extensively espoused all the drama. The impartiality of his powerful voice allows every kind of sentient being to understand in his or her own way and to attain thorough realization through his or her own wisdom. This is called patience in perceiving all as he calls the seventh kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Commentary This Bodhisattva Mahasattva can expertly observe all sentient beings and expound the drama to them by means of the whole mark of a vast long tongue. The whole mark of a vast long tongue refers to the ability to speak the drama. He observes each sentient being's dispositions and inclinations and teaches him or her accordingly. His voice is perfect as he explains the wonderful drama to the multitude. His voice also pervades the Buddha lands of the ten directions without hindrance, enabling all therein to hear the drama as suited to their individual differences. The Bodhisattva speaks the drama whenever the opportunity presents itself at the uh, at the very moment when beings are ready to hear such wonderful teachings, there is a saying, a Bodhisattva espouses the drama with a single sound, each sentient being understands according to his or her species and type. That is the reason a Bodhisattva can cause all beings to hear the drama as suited to their individual differences. In addition, while some beings understand the principles deeply, Others understand superficially, while some gain many insights, others gain very few. It is not the case that the Bodhisattva is partial. Rather, these differences are due to sentient beings' individual capacities. Those with great capacity will understand more, while those with little capacity will understand less. It is said that the Bodhisattva has great kindness for those with whom he has no affinities, and great compassion for all beings because he regards them as being one with himself. In other words, a Bodhisattva treats everyone equally without making any distinctions. Though the Bodhisattva knows that the self arises from nowhere and disappears into nowhere. He manifests sounds everywhere to explain the drama for all sentient beings. Though he knows there is nothing to say, he extensively spouts all the drama. The Bodhisattva understands that all Buddha drama is basically beyond the grasp of speech, language, and conceptualization. Indeed, the inherent nature of language is empty. The words are meaningless of themselves until we assign meanings to them. Knowing this, the Bodhisattva still explains all the drama for sentient beings so they can awaken upon hearing the Buddha's teachings. With the impartiality of his wonderful voice, 
the Bodhisattva espoused the Dharma door of equanimity. His teaching allows every kind of sentient being to understand in his or her own way and to attain thorough realization through his or her own wisdom. All beings are able to use their own wisdom to understand all things as they really are. This is called patience in perceiving all as equals, the seventh kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience in perceiving all as reflections? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva is neither born in the world nor dies in the world, is neither within the world nor outside of the world, neither cultivates in the world nor fails to cultivate in the world, is neither the same as nor different from those in the world, neither goes to the world nor fails to go to the world, neither dwells in the world nor does not dwell in the world, is neither of the world nor beyond the world. He neither cultivates the Bodhisattva's practices nor renounces his magnificent vows. He attaches neither to reality nor to unreality. Although he constantly practices the drama of all Buddhas, he is able to manage all worldly affairs. He neither drifts with the worldly currents nor dwells in the drama flow. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha what constitutes, constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience in perceiving all as reflections? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva is neither born in the world nor dies in the world, and is neither within the world nor outside of the world. Unlike ordinary people, a Bodhisattva can come and go with ease, without any restraints or obstructions. In addition, a Bodhisattva neither cultivates in the world nor fails to cultivate in the world, is neither the same as nor different from those in the world, neither goes to the world nor fails to go to the world, neither dwells in the world nor does not dwell in the world, and is neither of the world nor beyond the world. He cultivates neither worldly dramas nor transcendental dramas, he is neither inside nor outside the world. Rather, he is between the mundane and the transcendental. He neither cultivates the Bodhisattva's practices nor renounces his magnificent vows. Although a Bodhisattva cultivates the Bodhisattva practices, he does not attach to these practices, nor does he forsake his great vows. In all the methods of practice that he cultivates, he attaches neither to reality nor to unreality. In fact, a Bodhisattva is not attached to anything. Although he constantly practices the drama of all Buddhas, he is able to manage all worldly affairs. A Bodhisattva cultivates according to the principles of ultimate reality, yet he is not apart from worldly customs and conventions. He is able to handle all matters without any attachment. For worldly dramas are transcendental dramas, and transcendental dramas are worldly dramas. He does not discriminate among things or attach to anything. He neither drifts with the worldly currents nor dwells in the drama flow. Although a Bodhisattva can handle all worldly affairs, he remains unattached and of course with conditions without being affected by them. He is also able to remain unchanged while complying with conditions and not become attached to the flow of the drama. Sutra It is like how the sun, the moon, men, women, houses, mountains, forests, rivers, springs, and so forth are reflected in all water, physical entities, gems, mirrors, and other clear surfaces. A reflection is neither the same as nor different from the oil and other substances. It neither separates from nor merges with them. A reflection neither gets carried adrift in a river or stream nor sinks in a pond or well, appearing therein yet all the while untainted. 
sentient beings may perceive a reflection as being at one location and not another, but although objects far and near all have reflections, the distance of a reflection does not correspond to the distance of its object. Commentary It is like how the sun, the moon, men, women, horses, mountains, forests, like rivers, springs, and so forth, are reflected in oil, water, physical entities, gems, mirrors, and other clear surfaces. The images of these objects can be reflected on anything that is clear and pure. A reflection is neither the same as nor different from the oil and other substances. A reflection and its reflecting surface are neither the same nor different. It neither separates from nor merges with them. A reflection neither gets carried adrift in a river or a stream, nor sinks in a pond or well, appearing of therein, yet all the while untainted. Although a reflection appears on a reflecting surface, neither the reflection nor the reflecting surface is tainted. Sentient beings may perceive a reflection as being at one location and not another, but although objects far and near all have reflections, the distance of a reflection does not correspond to the distance of its object. Sentient beings know that the reflection exists at the place where it is being reflected and not elsewhere. However, although all objects near or far from us have afflictions, those reflections are not correspondingly near or far from us. In other words, it is objects that are close to or far away from us, not their reflections. Sutra The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same. He can perceive his own body as well as those of others. His wisdom allows him to perceive these states, yet he does not interpret them as general and speak of himself and others as being different. He simultaneously appears everywhere in his own country and other countries, all of which are distinctively different from each other. Just as the seed does not have roots, shoots, stems, nodes, branches, or leaves, yet is capable of producing such things, so too is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva capable in the same way. With the expedient means, he distinguishes duality in that which is non-dual, and yet he thoroughly understands the non-obstructive reality. This is called patience in perceiving all as reflections, the eighth kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Commentary The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same way. He can perceive his own body and mind as well as those of others. His wisdom allows him to perceive these states Yet, he does not interpret them as dual and speak of himself and others as being different. The Bodhisattva does not make any distinction between himself and others, for he has left duality behind. He simultaneously appears everywhere in his own country and other countries, all of which are distinctively different from each other. Although his native country and other countries are all different, the Bodhisattva is able to manifest in all these countries at the same time. Just as a seed originally does not have roots, shoots, stems, nodes, branches, or leaves, yet it is capable of producing such things. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same way, with expedient means. He distinguishes duality in real in that which is non-dual and yet he thoroughly understands the non-obstructive reality. Fundamentally, there is no duality. However, for the sake of teaching sentient beings, the great Bodhisattva among all Bodhisattvas uses experience to explain the concept of duality so we can thoroughly understand the perfect and mutually non-obstructive reality of a dual yet non-dual, non-dual yet dual. This is called patience in perceiving all as reflections, the eighth kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. 
Sutra. When the Bodhisattva Mahasattva achieved this patience, then without traveling to the lands of the ten directions, he is able to appear everywhere in all Buddha lands. He neither leaves this place nor goes to those places. Like a reflection, he appears everywhere and thus his practice is unobstructed. He causes sentient beings to perceive his different bodies as having the same material reality as the all worldly objects, yet these different forms are utterly not different. Difference and non difference are mutually non obstructive. This Bodhisattva is born in the first Kamas lineage, pure and unimpeded in his body, speech, and thought. Therefore, he is able to attain a pure body capable of assuming boundless physical forms. Commentary When the Bodhisattva Mahasattva achieves this patience, then without traveling to the lands of the ten directions, he is able to appear everywhere in all Buddha lands. Upon realizing this patience, although the Bodhisattva's physical body does not go to the lands in the ten directions, he is able to manifest in all Buddha lands. He neither leaves this place, the land in which he resides, nor goes to those places, all those Buddha lands. Like a reflection, he appears everywhere. The Bodhisattva is similar to reflections that can appear at any place where there is light because this Dharma practice enables him to master the spiritual power of countless transformations. He is able to attain this state and thus his practice is unobstructed. He causes sentient beings to perceive his different bodies as having the same material reality as all worldly objects. Yet, these different forms are actually not different. Difference and non-difference are mutually non-obstructive. This is the state where distinctions and non-distinctions are seamlessly integrated without obstructing, obstructing one, one another. Therefore, it can be described as both distinct and non-distinct. This Bodhisattva is born in the first common lineage, pure and unimpeded in his body, speech, and thought. The three modes of karma, body, mouth, and mind are pure and unobstructed. Therefore, he is able to attain a pure and wondrous body capable of assuming boundless physical forms.